Hello. Today, I have prepared for you two incredibly interesting stories about betrayal and brilliant revenge. Watch until the end, enjoy. I hired a private detective. My wife had changed a lot in the last month, and our quarrels were getting louder and more ridiculous. What about her? As if she hadn't noticed her transformation. I had my own small business for two years. It required development and my considerable attention, so I did not particularly bother and hired a private detective. My detective wasn't cheap, but he was highly professional. He managed to wiretap her car and even her office at her office two days later. And I listened to conversations between her and some guy. The guy, by the way, was a colleague of hers. It was obvious from the conversation that they had already had sex several times near work and even in the workplace. And now her lover really wanted to do it right in bed. They decided to do it at the hotel. Friday night she told me she was going out with her girlfriends on Saturday. I already knew the guy was married too. I quickly contacted his wife, we met up. I told her what I knew and told her, if she wanted proof, she should come with me Saturday night. So, we followed my wife, parked in the rental car outside the bar. Didn't have to wait long, my wife gets out, followed by her lover. He was already waiting for her at the bar. When we arrived, his wife was already crying. I tell her to be mad, not to cry. Then I notice them heading toward my wife's car, which, by the way, is the one I bought her. The lover gets behind the wheel. They arrive at an inexpensive hotel, not far from the airport. I suggested that the lover's wife wait a while so they could get undressed in time. Then our trap would definitely work. Five minutes later, I knock on the door and yell. Open up, it's the guards. The lover comes to the door and opens it, holding only a towel over his groin. I say, hi, I'm the husband. And I punch him in the face. He goes down. Then I take my wife's clothes and I drag him out of the room. Actually take him outside lover and throw him in a snowdrift. It was winter, the month of January. His wife gets hysterical, hinning and kicking him. I go into the room again. My wife is sitting on the bed. She's shaking, mumbling. You shouldn't have known. I got even angrier at these words. I also drag her out of the room and drag her to the parking lot. I record her on camera. She trembles and admits to everything she's done. I tell her no one will ever forgive her again. I quickly dial her dad's cell phone number. She screams, no, no, no. After explaining herself to her father, her father simply says that she disgusts him and hangs up. She lets out screams and moans. I tell her to get dressed and give her her clothes. She is trembling and shaking. I call a cab, put her in the car and send her to her own sister's house. I got into her car myself as if it were my own which I had given her. And her lover and his wife drove away in some rented car. Then on Monday, I call her boss. After I told him about the actions of his two employees, and I told him that their continued presence in his company would force me to sue him since I have good connections in the bar and the courts. Nonsense, of course, but it worked. He fired them both. Then he packed up his wife's things and took her to her sister's house. It took her two more days before the shock passed. She calls me and I refuse to talk to her. This goes on for a few weeks or so. Then her sister calls and says she's lost her mind, has stopped talking to everyone. I advised her sister to call her medics. My wife ended up under observation at the psychiatric hospital. I got a call from the hospital, made a reluctant appointment and was told before me that she had fully realized what she had done. And what I did shocked her to the point of complete insanity in the truest sense of the word. Her psychiatrist said she was having a serious nervous breakdown from her experiences, including the crushing humiliation I caused when I made her confess while standing in a public parking lot, half naked. The psychiatrist said it was extreme and led in part to a split in her personality. But things should normalize. I noted that she treated me like trash before I caught her, and her personality was not as good as she presented herself to be. As I was leaving, I was told I would call back the next week. The next week our meeting took place. She looked dejected and like a shadow of a former woman. My wife used to be a figure skater with big shapes, but she had lost at least 50 pounds in a few weeks. She said she was trying to keep me from finding out about the affair and that she cheated because I was working too hard. I called bullshit on that. 
reminded her of her own words from when she was complaining about not having enough money, so I went into business to make a living for us. I told her she kept lying. I can't be with you. I want a divorce. Her doctor almost threw me out of the room. I yelled at him and he yelled at me. And all of a sudden she says, Okay, okay. Yes, I was selfish. I wanted to feel the romance to experience the thrill and to know what cheating was like. I suggested she think about what it was all about. Now the affair is long in the past. Your parents resent you. Your job is lost. It's going to take some serious effort to make it right. And certainly a lot of it. A lot of the time she asked not to leave her. Said she didn't know what she was going to do without me, and I kept quiet. I was still in touch with my wife and her lover. They were still living under the same roof. I asked to see her and offered to have wine together. She told me she was a married woman. I told her I was technically a married man too, and the same circumstances didn't prevent our spouses from having fun. So after that, why should anything prevent us from doing the same thing? So, we met. After a trivial conversation, I leaned in and said jokingly that it would probably be good for them if we became lovers too. I expected a polite rebuff, but to my surprise she smiled and said, please don't take me to that lassie hotel. We booked a very nice room and spent the next three days getting to know each other. And that went on for about two months. While I was thinking about what to do next, to be honest, the anger had subsided, and I thought about leaving everything as it was, but something kept bugging me, and I decided to get a divorce after all. And now two years have passed, and I am grateful to fate for this incident, because it was only now that I felt what real life is like, and I wish you the same. That's the story of the hero of our story. Write your opinion in the comments, and we'll move on to the second story. Second story. Perhaps someone has experienced similar situations as I have. My story is quite simple and at the same time full of unexpected events and climaxes. So, my name is Stanislav and I am 37 years old. I am quite successful in my field, running my own small business, I live in a small country house and do not deny myself anything. But this is now. And it all started with the fact that first I had to go the way of total meanness and betrayal. So, I'm 20 years old kid came to a strange city and was completely alone except that sometimes my parents helped me. I went to college by correspondence, and in order to rent a room, eat something, pay for my studies, and buy some clothes, I had to work very hard. I clearly decided that no matter what it cost me, I must achieve at least some results. After a long time I have a successful career, and in the next couple of years I was planning to buy a long-awaited apartment, I was pretty fed up with renting an apartment. I was very happy and proud of myself, Emotions were brimming over the edge. It seemed to me that life had just begun, and now everything would be fine. I dreamed about my beautiful wife, my children and my own comfortable home. And at this happy moment for me, I just met my future wife Maria, under very funny circumstances. On another lunch break, I came to my favorite coffee shop, where I was served by a new pretty waitress. She was a plain, ordinary girl, obviously from the provinces. Judging by her manner and speech, I knew it at once. Something flashed between us at the time. Her eyes literally drove me crazy after she took my order and after a while brought my dish. On the way to my table she stumbles and her tray with my lunch flies out of her hands. She starts frantically picking up the broken dishes. I mechanically rush over to help her. Please forgive me, I'm so clumsy, she said in a half whisper. It was no big deal. Don't worry about it, I replied. Now I'm definitely going to get fired, the waitress muttered, barely holding back tears. At that moment, the administrator of the cafe ran up and started yelling at her employee. I began to defend her and say that it was me who had accidentally pushed her. But in my defense, the administrator replied that she saw perfectly well that it was she who dropped the tray and eventually fired her. And ever since then, without going into detail about what happened after she was fired, we got married and started living together. And things got great. I finally almost saved up for an apartment, made my wife happy with the news, and we started planning children. While I continued to work and pick up future dwellings. And this case, by the way, is not easy, I must say. Another piece of good news happened. Maria got pregnant. I was delighted when I learned about it and carried his wife in his arms all pregnancy. 
But all at once came to an end when I learned a terrible truth that almost made my eyes black. On that ominous day, I decided to give my wife a little surprise. At lunchtime I came home with a bouquet of flowers and sweets. I went into the apartment, my wife was in the shower. I put the flowers in a vase, put the goodies in the fridge, and went into the room. I took my laptop to surf the internet, and it was already on. There I saw my wife's page on one of the social networks and an open dialogue with her best friend. And what I read there made me pale with horror and turned my whole life upside down. In that correspondence, my spouse openly calls me, to put it mildly, a loser from whom she will soon take away half of her real estate. And they were also jokingly discussing the fact that she is not pregnant by me. And as soon as I buy an apartment, she finally that will divorce and live a full life in the city to the envy of his relatives. I broke into a cold sweat and my heart raced. I wanted to scream from the pain. But at that moment, the water in the bathroom went silent. I quickly turned off my laptop and ran out of the apartment. I sat down in a nearby park, opened a bottle of hard liquor, called the chief, got off work and began to think about what to do next. And then it occurred to me, as I thought at the time, the only and only logical way to begin to solve this problem at the root. The only thing that calmed me down at the time was that I had not yet bought the apartment, but I was already going to meet and sign contracts because I had found a very suitable option and I immediately came up with what I thought was an ingenious plan of revenge. A couple of months later came the day X. I have to say right away that all this time I pretended to know nothing and continued to play, as my wife put it in her correspondence, the naive loser. At one point I called her and told her that I had bought the apartment and signed all the contracts and that she could come right now and see our new little nest. In 15 minutes a cab would come for her. My wife was overjoyed, as evidenced by her enthusiastic shouting into my phone. After the appointed time, my wife got into a cab and drove to the appointed place. When she got out she was pretty surprised and didn't understand what was going on, because the cab driver took her not to the doorway of her new panel house, but to the train station. After which I texted her. My dear wife, I hasten to please you with the news that I changed my mind about buying an apartment and decided to buy myself a house. Why myself? Because we are getting a divorce. Half of the real estate from the naive loser will not be taken away, because after your plans, I with the best lawyer in town, has drawn up all the papers on the parents. I wish you all the best for you and your future child. I think you have already guessed that if anything happens, I will have no trouble getting a DNA test. Good luck, sweetheart, finding not a naive guy in love to hang on to in the city, but a lot of brains to hang on to in life. And since then we divorced, and I never saw her again, I do not strive to build a serious relationship. I live for my own pleasure. I communicate with different women, if you know what I mean, and do not deny myself anything. Found a hobby, which has grown into a lifelong business, because it's certainly not a child from a stranger's uncle will give birth to you. That's the story of the hero of our story. Write your opinion in the comments, and do not forget to subscribe and like. Ahead of you awaiting a lot of wonderful stories. Well, as always, I wish you a good mood. And all the best to you. Thank you for watching.